Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. You're Sambo, and joining us, as always, is Seraphis, our level 39 Worgen Mage. Say good day, Seraphis. Our fates are intertwined. Indeed, our fates are intertwined. And of course, if you joined us in the last episode, well, the last two episodes, then you're definitely intertwined with our fate here. And of course, our fate at the moment is all to do with the Pilgrim's Bounty. And you can see here, rapidly running out of time here, Pilgrim's Bounty ends at 7 p.m. my time tonight. So I've got probably one more chance to show you guys a little bit more about it. And certainly hope you're enjoying this run through of the event. It's a great event in the game. Of course, uh, one of the main reasons you want to be doing this, just to recap, is so that we can get our cooking skill up to level. And of course, we started off our episode last time with a cooking skill of 45. And look at this, we're already up to 162, and that's going to get even higher. All thanks to this wonderful event and all of the quests around it. And of course, last time we left off here in the Dwarven District. That's exactly where we are, the Dwarven District of Stormwind City, the mighty Stormwind City of the Alliance. One of the major capital cities of the Alliance, in fact, and you can see here we go. Here's where we were out the front of the Valley of Heroes. We've got the Trade District down here. That's where, of course, the Auction House and Bank and a lot of Regent vendors, that sort of thing, the Barber, they're all down there. We've got the Mage Quarter over here. We've got the Major Cathedral in the center, the Stormwind Keep over to the east here. And we are in the Dwarven District. And of course, all of this too up here, we haven't been exploring. This is all new post-cataclysm. Like I said, now that we've got our teleport, we'll be able to come back here and have a good old explore around Stormwind City. And in fact, all of the other major alliance cities as well. We'll do them in a future episode. We won't concern ourselves with that today. Because what I want to do is get through this Pilgrim's Bounty content. Now... What we are trying to do, actually we'll bring the map back up, today is get ourselves to Ironforge. And I'll tell you why in a second. But Ironforge is way up north. It's up north in the Eastern Kingdoms in this snowy area here, which we haven't explored yet, called Dunmoreau. And in Dunmoreau is Ironforge, the capital city of the dwarves, dug into the side of a mountain. That's it there, that's the map. And we need to get ourselves out the front of the gates of Ironforge in order to be able to do the next part of our Pilgrim's Bound cooking quest and you can see that's this one here we're out of cranberry chutney again so what we need to do is bring 20 servings of cranberry chutney to the guys outside the feasting area here in Stormwind now to do cranberry chutney to make cranberry chutney of course you can see here here it is selected in our uh, recipe list here and it's a nice high level uh, cooking item so that will actually let us level up but you can see we need honey now we can get honey from the pilgrim's bounty barrels that's fine but we need these tangy wetlands cranberries here now we can't get them while we're here in stormwind we have to travel all the way to ironforge because that's the only place they're sold so that's why we're going to ironforge now it just so happens i think we're also yep we're having to deliver some stuff to Ironforge as well, some of the pumpkin pies which were made from the Stormwind pumpkins. So a bit of a double-edged sword there. Now I think I showed you in the last episode that we can fly there, we can take a flight point and I do again recommend that you do that because it's a beautiful view. But for now what we're going to do is take advantage of this gnome technology. That's right, there is actually a thing called the Deep Run Tram and not a lot of people know about it, it's quite surprising actually. Basically it's a tram that runs between Ironforge and Stormwind. So what we're going to do is go through this portal and there we go, you can see a picture of the Deep Run, Deep Run Tram station in the background there of course a good old gnomish engineer here we are discovered the deep run tram there it is in the background actually it's a bit poor timing on our behalf you'll see it take off in a minute but this is basically like a interchange like a train station and there it goes now these come and go regularly so you don't have to worry about it and you can see we've got waiting areas here where we can actually sit down and wait if we wish that's right but you can see here this is the tram all right, so what it's best to do, because you never know which one's going to come, there are two of them, get yourself in the middle of the two trams, 
that's over here and basically wait for one or the other to come so they're going to come down this great big tram line here now that is a tunnel that leads all the way to Ironforge it goes deep underground and it goes deep under a lock ie a bunch of water lakes and it's one single tunnel you can actually run through there if you wish and at the other end of it if you want to you can go down there you can see if you accidentally fall down you can climb up that ramp by the way uh, you can actually run all the way to Ironforge if you wish and in fact a lot of horde raids actually utilize this as a raiding tool a way of getting in but anyway here we go here comes the tram we're gonna uh, sit on the one up the front because it affords the best view there we go and sit right down the very front of it there we are and you can see there's three carriages and this will literally take us there we go we're off so yeah you've got to jump on pretty quickly or else you'll miss it but you can see we're basically hanging off there you go you can see the connector there hanging off this rail and there's all sorts of cool little sights to see along the way you can see we're going deep underground and again we're basically traversing underneath all of the zones all the way from uh, Elwyn Forest up through I think the Badlands through the Burning Steps and then of course uh, underneath oh look at that by the way there's, there's the lock and by the way do you know there's a little secret in there there's shipwrecks and all sorts of things but there's actually a Loch Ness monster in there and I never used to believe that but it is absolutely true if you've uh, ever got out and glitched in there you can actually see it in there it's quite cool but anyhow going through that uh, underground through Dunmore Road and then of course it comes up again you can see we're on the uphill climb now it's very fast uh, it will take us up into an area called Tinkertown which is in Ironforge and here we go already bang we've arrived and you can see there's some other passengers waiting there as well and there's these deep run rats which you're welcome to kill their vermin but yes, this is actually going to come out in an area called Tinkertown. Now, just like there is the Dwarven area in Stormwind, there's also a Gnomish area here in Ironforge. And that's where we're going to come out. So we'll just give it a second to load in there. So this is another first for you guys, of course. And oh, by the way, again, please excuse my snuffle sniffles and my terrible sounding voice. I'm still riddled with, well, look, I don't know what it is. It's either really bad hay fever or I've got the flu. It feels like the flu. I've got a headache. Uh, I've got aches. Oh, woe is me. So anyway, I'll stop complaining. But yeah, that's why I sound like rubbish. So I'm very sorry about that. But here you go. You can see we are now in Tinkertown. And it said it's Alliance territory. That's because we're in another Alliance town. And we are in the gnome area of the town. And you can see here on our main map, there it is. That is Ironforge. Now, Ironforge is actually built into the side of a big mountain. So if we go here, you still won't be able to see it. But you might be able to see the mountain there. And you can see our little player pip. We're underneath this mountain in the zone of Dunmoreau, which is a snow-filled zone. And of course, you guys know I love my snow. So I absolutely love this zone. But what we'll do uh, again is we're going to go straight to our destination rather than have a bit of a sightsee because yeah we'll do that in another episode and we're going to run out of time otherwise but yeah this is an amazing city you'll see it start to sprawl out there you go look at this huge big cabins we're in the military ward here all of these uh dwarven houses and shops built in to these great halls underneath the mountain so it's very reminiscent of the uh, well, basically the Lord of the Rings in here by the way is the PvP area that's where you queue for battlegrounds there's a whole bunch of stuff here and of course if any of you have played on the Alliance before you'll be very familiar with Ironforge it used to be a major hangout and especially the commons area which we're coming up to yep we're coming up to now you can fall down in there but of course the whole thing about ironforge is it's all about blacksmithing and smelting so of course as the name suggests there is a huge great big forge in the center of the city but this is the main commons area here this is where most people hang out you can see there's the heroes call board in here is the auctioneers so that's the auction house there you go auctioneer red muse and you've got all sorts of vendors etc in here by the way whoops in here is or oh, there's the mailbox and you can see it's a different style of mailbox as well to everything that we're used to now speaking of which we've got some mail i see so let's quickly check that and you can see we've got a bunch of successful auctions that's very good once again showing that you don't have to uh, collect your mail from anywhere in particular oh look at that 64 gold for our heavy leather we like that the other stuff is obviously still up on the auction house but in here are the bankers for ironforge including a vault administrator and our guild vaults as well 
So yeah, Barnum. Oh, now, by the way, speaking of names of bankers, I'm going to show you something in a second. All right, so we've got Barnum, and we've got Bailey, and we've got Salil. So there we go, 10 internet points if you can figure out what the connection between those two three bankers is. Barnum, Bailey, and Salil. Yet another one of the World of Warcraft's little uh, real life memes if you like. Or a bit of a nod to some pop culture and that sort of thing. Alright, so let's uh, actually, what I want to do, I don't want to mount up just yet, I just want to go to a vendor. And again, like every other city, you can hover over a signpost outside a dwarven area and it will tell you what type of vendor it is. Now, Dwarven stuff is always carved out of stone, of course, so it's a very different look and feel to what we're used to in Darnassus and indeed Stormwind. And we've got a weapon merchant here. You got my attention. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to lose my voice in a minute. Just going to sell off our stuff and make sure we don't need any repairs. And we don't. That's good. See you soon. See you soon. Actually, my horse vo voice is very good for doing a Dwarven impersonation at the moment, I think. Now, what we'll do quickly, though, is I'll give you a little treat, and we'll go oh. out and see the Great Forge. That is through here. There's a little sneaky shortcut. And you can see, basically, the whole uh, city is centered around the Great Forge. And there it is, the Great Forge. Look at that, folks. What a majestic view. You can see the molten metal pouring into the molds down below. And look at that. If you fall on there, it's all over, Rover. Whoops. And as with any other city, you've got all of these uh, signposts which show you where to go. A lot of trainers in these houses here, and a lot of shops over the other side. And of course, this is where all the flight points are, which is great. But look at that. Isn't it incredible? Great big look. We've got steam. We've got the noise. We've got siphons. We've got molds. We've got winches, um, pots pouring, the molten lava. You name it. This is a real industrial city, of course. The good old dwarves. What's on your mind? Thief catch of Thunderbrew there. Uh, the good old dwarves being very industrious. And of course, the king of the dwarves uh, is here as well. Well, normally, actually. I'm not sure if he's still here. I think he normally is. We'll check that when we do a bit of a sightseeing tour. But anyhow, like I said, let's not get distracted. We need to go out the front gates, which are themselves majestic. So you've got two ways of getting out. Basically, over there, either side of the auction house. We run through. Oh, there's a sparkle pony. And you'll be greeted with this fantastic statue here of King Magni Bronzebeard. Let's see if we can see it. Whoops, I flipped myself around. There it is. Duh. You can see him there holding up his uh, mace and his axe. That is a huge, ginormous statue of the king. Look how big it is. It's fantastic, isn't it? And, of course, as you can probably tell already, this is something that's very exciting for me. Very new to Seraphis. It's a snowy zone. Welcome to the gates of Ironforge and the zone of Dunmoreau. Will you look at this? I'm going to actually have a bit of a sightsee over the edge here, just so you can see how beautiful this area is. Look at that, folks. It is an absolute Oh, it's a pleasure to explore through this area. And by the way, look at your little footprints kicking up the, the snow there. I don't know if you can see that. It's just fantastic. Let's go up higher and get even a better view. And I love the sound that you make when you run through the snow too, by the way. Let's have a listen. Oh, not sure if you can hear that or not on the YouTube video. So cool though. And you leave footprints in the shine. Look at that, the reflection of the sun on the snow there. And of course our footprints, our paw prints there being left in the snow. It's just amazing. But look at that view, will you folks? We'll zoom right in so we can get her out of the way. How is that? It is an absolutely stunning, beautiful zone. And I love, love questing in it. And you know what? I roll uh, basically gnomes and dwarves just so I can do it. I've even quested here on things like Draenei's. Like actually traveled all the way over here just to be able to quest through this most amazing, beautiful zone. And you can see there now we've got Ironforge opened up on the map. And you can see it's very snowy. And you can see now, too, we've got new flight points in this zone if you're a veteran. So it's a lot easier to get around. Let's hop up here and see if we can have a bit of a look out this way. You can see it's a very expansive zone. Actually fades way off, way beyond the uh, draw distance over there. And, of course, back in the old days, you used to try and climb up the top of Mount Forge. Uh, Mount Forge. On top of the mountain above Iron Forge. Try and find sneaky ways up there. Now, folks, you can actually just fly up there if you have a flying mountain. So that's uh, worth bearing in mind. It's very cool. Dunmoreau chickens. Hello. 
but look at this and of course if you've seen the intro cinematic to the original world of warcraft you'll know that uh, the gates of iron forge are featured in that and in fact standing up there is a dwarf hunter with his bear pet that's basically where that filming is i mean of course it's done in cinematic graphics not in engine graphics but that's where uh, that little dwarf hunter was standing and of course if you look down you can see them that's them right there, the gates of Iron Forge. It's just fantastic. Look how high that mountain is up there. It's just an awesome area to explore. Seriously, folks, uh, I urge you to come and have a look through this zone. It's just wonderful. Anyhow, that is not why we're here. We're here to do business for the Pilgrim's Bounty. And that is, of course, firstly to hand into this guy. You. you can see here, Pumpkin Pie. More pumpkin pie just in time. So we need to give him five. And of course, we did the right thing and cooked up a whole bunch. So there we go, we want to complete that. The pumpkin pie has been a big hit up here. Never seen a dwarf get so excited about anything made from a vegetable. And that is it, we receive a good old 2k XP and some iron forge rep there as well. And here we go, cranberry chutney. If you haven't tried the cranberry chutney yet, you're in for a treat. It's made with the freshest tangy wetlands cranberries, and of course wetlands is a zone just north of here. Uh, uh, where is it? Just pick some up from the Pilgrim's Bounty vendor and, vendor and you'll want to try your hand at making chutney. The recipe should be in your Bountiful cookbook and of course it is because we've already learnt it. If you've got some extra time on your hands, would you mind making some of the chutney and bringing it down to Jasper Moore outside Stormwind? Now, hopefully you guys you're getting an idea now of how all this works they're all connected and you get sent to and fro between all of the cities and again we've now got our portals that we'll use a silly sambo i promised him i'd trade him for the pie that you brought from stormwind so this quest uh, says that we make five servings of cranberry chutney and bring them to jasper moore at the feasting area outside Be of careful. stormwind city so of course that's exactly what we'll do but at the same time we've also got a daily quest here Hi. from the iron forge cooking trainer from katrin iron kettle great to meet you great to meet you all right and you can see by the way let's see if we've got any training no our next training is 175 that's okay Be good welcome don't forget the stuffing all right, so this is a daily quest. So this is something that you're going to want to do every day. Of course, we're going to run out of time. We're not going to be able to do it. Uh, but you will want to do this and her other one daily. Keeping these tables stocked, and by the way, we've got these tables here, uh, is an overwhelming task. I've got to make the cranberry chutney while keeping my eye on the sweet potatoes and making sure the pies don't burn. I think I've got everything covered. No, wait, I'm forgetting something. The stuffing. Oh no, there won't be time to get another batch of stuffing started before everything else is done. Would you be willing to help me out? It shouldn't take too long to buy or make some stuffing and you can buy the ingredients right here. All right, so bring 20 spice bread stuffing to Catron Iron Kettle at the feasting area outside Ironforge. Now, Keep your feet on the ground. as you know, folks, we were smart when we were down in Stormwind and we made a whole bunch of stuffing. In fact, we made almost 60 of them. So I can hand this in That's straight away. Mind. Don't forget the stuffing. There we go. Continue that. And look at this. Right away, we can choose ourselves uh, one of the pilgrim's attire. Now I know from history that what I'm going to do is choose the pilgrim's dress because I actually like to make a cooking outfit out of this, believe it or not. Um, and once we get our chef's hat, this here looks really good with a cook's outfit. So because we're going to be limited for time and we're not going to be able to do these dailies over and over, which means we'll be able to get all of these items, of course. If I'm only going to get one, I want to get the pilgrim's dress. All right, so complete that quest. And there we are. In fact, what we're going to do right away is go into our outfits here. And we're going to make a new set. And I'm going to call it cooking. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a few things and add some more things. So for a start, I'm going to add the pilgrim's dress. There we go. And I'm going to take off the, uh, probably the braces. We'll just get rid of those. And we'll, oh, no, did that make a difference? visually no it didn't so we can leave them on we'll leave our shoes on uh, we're going to take off the belt though because you can see there that looks a bit funny and we'll take off our gloves there we are oh and now the braces show up so we'll take them off and you'll see them disappear there we go i think everything else is pretty fine yep we might take off our there we go we'll take off our staff so now we're starting to look like a cook now i'm going to basically save this as cooking so save yes 
there we go and we'll wear that while we're doing this pilgrims festival why not and you can see we kind of look like our cooking trainer there now as well which is very cool now she just happens to have another daily quest oh, as yeah. well and by the way they're the uh cranberry chutneys the wetlands uh cranberries in the background there those little bushes you can see all right can't get enough turkey i've been cooking non-stop since before the start of the holiday and i still can't keep up with the demand i don't suppose you could i could persuade you to help with one of the dishes could i turkey is hard to come by here so if you could supply some slow roasted turkeys it would be a big help if you intend to prepare them yourself you can hunt fresh wild turkeys anywhere in Elwyn Forest. You should be able to buy everything else you need from any of the Pilgrim's Bounty Venters. So, you can see here again, that requires us to go out into Elwyn Forest. You might remember in the last episode, we went and paid a visit to good old Goldshire in Elwyn Forest. And of course, roaming around nearby were the wild turkeys. So we obviously need to grab some of them and make ourselves 20 slow roasted turkeys. And I think you'll see there, yeah, that's a recipe that requires 280 cooking. So we want to get our cooking up to that level as well. But first things first, let's have a look in our journal here. And cranberry chutney, you can see we need to prepare five of them. What we're going to do is go to the Pilgrim's Bounty, where are they, the barrels? There are the supplies right there. And we're going to get ourselves a bunch of ingredients that we need for the chutney. So we need honey. So I'm going to buy a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to buy probably about 50. We'll see how we go. 45, 50. There we go. And we'll also buy the same amount of cranberries as well. These tangy wetlands cranberries. And you can see here it's showing us on that icon how many we've got in our bags as a total. Which is great. And I think that we're up to 50 there. Yep, there we go. That's all we need. And yeah, that should do, I think... All right, now, by the way, before we start cooking those, I'm just wondering if there is an achievement. By the way, Vista's having a bit of a fit. Um, you can see the tables here. I think, 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 think. Let's have a look. World events, Pilgrim's Bounty. I think there's an event, or rather a uh, achievement, for sitting at all of the different tables. I could be getting confused here. On, acquire the spirit of sharing from a complete bountiful table at every alliance capital. Ah, that's what it is. So you can see here, Iron Forge is not yet done. Now, of course, to get the spirit of sharing, you guys know what we have to do. And that is that we have to sit at one of these tables here and we have to eat. Here we go, in this case, stuffing. Can't cast that yet. We basically have to eat five stacks of each of these foods, so we're going to have to do these at all of the different ones. Now, by the way, you can see we can track this as always. You can see we're going to have to get this at, we'll get it out of the way there, uh, Darnassus, the Exodar, and Ironforge. So we're going to be traveling around and doing that, so that's a nice, another easy achievement we can get there, which is great. All right, let's get off. This one and hop on the sweet potato chair. And there we go, sweet potatoes has come up. So you know the drill folks, basically we're gonna to have to go to every chair and eat five stacks of it. So I won't put you through that. Uh, we'll take a pause and come back as we're close to the end of this task. We'll be right back. All right, folks, here we go. We're on the final stretch now. We just got the pie chair here. We've got the feast on pie. And you can see that's up at the top here, up to two stacks. Look at that table of food. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> As I said, it certainly makes me hungry whenever we do these quests. Come on, Vista. That's still recharging. And just one more stack. And there we go. We've got ourselves the spirit of sharing. And you can see here in this achievement, we've now done Iron Forge and Stormwind. So that was well worth it. All right. Let's eject ourselves from the chair here now again unless we just in case we run out of time you're going to want to do that at all of the capital cities as well to get that achievement now what we have to do of course is start cooking up some cranberry chutney now you know as per before with the other recipes this is actually going to increase our cooking skill as well you can see it yep there we go it's lifting up 165 now 166 so we're going to basically just go as far as we can cooking this chutney now of course we want to get five which we've already done here for the quest hand in and that quest is where is it here we go cranberry chutney we've done that that has to be taken back to the area outside the front of stormwind city so we're going to do that 
but we're also going to cook up a whole bunch anyhow you can see them appearing in our bag somewhere around here there they are over there I'll pop them down there you can see this is a different type of food again and it restores four percent of your health but the well-fed buff if we actually spend more than 10 seconds eating it gives us 19 spell power which is also very good for a mage and 17 stamina for an hour so it's a great food to cook up lots of to get that well-fed buff uh, but we're also going to make up lots of these because I'm sure that the uh, basically the vendors in the other cities are going to ask for some of these for their daily quests. So it always just helps to cook up a storm. Don't worry about doing anything else in the game when you're doing the Pilgrim's Bounty quest. Just cook, 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 cook. And there's someone else with the same idea, by the way. Nice night elf there, level 85 night elf hunter with her cooking outfit on. But yeah, cook up lots and lots of stuff, and of course that means not only are you going to get your cooking skill up, but you're also going to have lots of supplies for when other vendors ask you for the particular type of recipe. Anyhow, look at that, we've been yakking away, so we're already at, uh, well we've only got 10 left to go, uh, and we're already, already over skill level 200 for our cooking, so we might as well let it go now, as we're nearly done. And what skill do we need to get to? We need to get to 220 to make these candied sweet potatoes. You can see here that cooking recipe there isn't available to us until we're at skill level 220. So we might actually have to get some more, more ingredients for the cranberry chutney. Yeah, at 212. So of course you know what that means. We just have to wander over here. Come on Vista, behave, behave. And we'll get ourselves maybe 20 more. There we go, so four stacks of each. All done, and we'll go back to this cooking table here, and we'll cook up 20 more. Now again, hopefully that will take us to 220, and at the same time, of course, it'll give us a nice bunch of these to be able to carry around as well, which is great. All right, so we're up to 217. This is looking good. What I'll do is I'll pause until we finish cooking there. We'll be right back. And look at that folks, just happened there, we got Expert Cook, another achievement, I told you it was fast, great way to level up all of your skills by the way, and you can see here, we already did the, um, what did we get, we got Journeyman Cook prior to this, and now we've got Expert Cook, because of course, we have hit 225 skill points in cooking, so we're getting achievements of plenty around here, and of course, getting our cooking skill right up, which is just fantastic. So we've now got 225 out of 225 so there's a number of things that need to happen we also need to train up to the next level of cooking for a start so let's say that we seek training and you can see we need artisan cook how good is this there we go we can now train up to a level of 300 and we can train a whole bunch of normal recipes here spider sausage um, spotted yellow tail you name it and you can see the next level up of cooking is 240 for these other recipes but if we go and look in our cooking book keep your feet on the ground there we go. Now, why is that not open? There we go. Oh, we got turned into a turkey, by the way. You've been covered in turkey feathers. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Yep, that's because part of the achievements and quests for other players, uh, and we'll, well, I'm not sure if we'll have time to get to that point, by the way, uh, it is to go and turn other players into turkeys using an item called, I think it's the turkey shooter. And I think one of the achievements, if we have a look, is to, where are we? World events. No, wait a minute, that's what we want there. Pilgrim's Bounty, there we go. And basically we'll untrack that one now too. Cook up every one of the Pilgrim's Bounty dishes. We've done three of them already. Um, Spirit of Sharing, we know about that one. While, no, we don't know about that one. Each of the dailies, no. No, okay, I think it must be a quest, not an achievement, but that's okay. Anyway, that's what happens. We've been turned into a gobble, gobble, gobble turkey uh, because someone else did that to us as part of their turkey feathers quest, which is very cool. All right, so now what we can do, though, folks, is we can now learn this candied sweet potato. So let's learn that ability. There we go, and we'll get rid of this turkey costume just so we can see what we're doing. And you can see here, here it is, candied sweet potato. Now, these here, these, or rather, this is what's going to be next, by the way, that will level up our cooking uh, up to 300. And you can see here that one of the ingredients is Teldrassil sweet potato. And of course, 
that is sold by the Pilgrim's Bounty vendor in Darnassus. So we're going to have to take a trip back to Darnassus and go visit them to get those actual ingredients out of the barrels in Darnassus. Now, again, if you are not a mage, then that's going to be a rather long trip. Basically what you're going to have to do is get yourself down to Stormwind City, if we open the map here, make it nice and big. You're going to have to go back inside, well there's two ways of doing it, either go back inside to Tinker Town inside Ironforge and go to the Deep Run Tram here and of course that will take us down to Elwyn Forest and into Stormwind City. Then you have to go to the harbour and then of course take the boat back to Teldrassil. That is the pretty much the only way you're going to get back to Teldrassil to get those potatoes if you're not a mage. If you know a mage, a high level mage, they'll be able to make you a portal to Darnassus and of course if you're us, we'll be able to actually here we go. Actually, where is it? There we go. Teleport to Darnassus ourselves. Okay, so that's why being a mage is very, very, very Great handy. All right, so Off have we got go. everything we need? We've got uh, lots of stacks of cranberries there, which is good. And let's just double check our quests here. Turkeys we'll need to pick up from the Elwyn Forest, of course. And we've got our cranberry chutney to take back to Stormwind. And we also have to take back... 20, oh, 20 candied sweet potatoes. Again, that's something that we're going to need to go to um, Teldrassil first for. And we're out of Cranberry. We need to take Cranberry Chutney back to Stormwind City. So I think pretty much, hang on, let's see if we've got any ingredients. What I'm going to do while we're here, this is another little tip. While you're at a bountiful barrel in a city, grab a whole bunch of their particular regent. Okay, now everything like the autumnal herbs and the honey, they're available everywhere else. But you can see here, I'm basically going to grab two lots of 20. And you can see them up here in my bags. There we go. Because I'm sure the cooking dailies actually ask you to make more of them when you're at another city. So to save yourself coming back here, just grab a bunch of those ingredients. It's only 25 copper for five of them, so you might as well. Anyhow, that's it. Certainly... Uh, Certainly hope you guys really enjoyed seeing Dunmoreau because that's a big treat for me. I really, really love it. Now, we're running out of time for this episode. Boy, the, the whole Pilgrim's Bounty thing is going to take up so many episodes, isn't it? But uh, what we'll do to finish off this, I think, is uh, do another special treat, which, of course, is to teleport to Stormwind. So how do you do that? Well, of course, folks, you know what you have to do. You have to have the regents for the teleport spells in your bag. And, of course, that's here. We've got ourselves... You know, let's just swap that. We'll put them in our bag there. There we go. The rune of teleportation. I got myself 20 of them. So we can actually teleport 20 times before uh, needing to get more regents. So let's now select Stormwind. And there it is. And all we do is click on that. And it's that simple. We are now literally going to be ported to Stormwind City into the Mage Quarter. In fact, into the Mage Tower. And I'm sure you'll agree it's great being a mage. Not only can we conjure our own food, but now, of course, we're able to zip all around the world in an instant. It's just fantastic. Seriously, it's the best thing ever. That's one of the reasons I absolutely love being a mage. All right, so you can see it's taking a wee while to load in there. We'll let it go because, of course, as soon as I pause the recording, it'll load in. And there we go. We are back inside the Mage Tower inside, inside Stormwind City. And, of course, you might remember from last time, all we have to do is port out. Oops, there's two portals. I think I took the wrong one. Come on, Vista. Stop glugging along. So we just pop through this portal. And there we go. We get to go downstairs past the portal to the blasted lands there to the dark portal and we can just jump down and there we go in the mage quarter let's mount up beautiful isn't it i love i love stormwind there's so many different areas and again we'll definitely do the sightseeing tour don't worry folks and in fact if you like if you're lucky what i'll do is i'll get on one of my high level characters so we've got ourselves a nice flying mount and we can actually see it from the air because it is absolutely a sight to behold listen to the stormwind music there in the background very majestic we've got the canals there the fishing trainer the fishing dailies the stockades over there we're going to fly our, our rather run through the trade district here famous fountain in stormwind city and then of course out through the valleys of heroes valley of heroes through the main gate of stormwind city itself the majestic main gate and as always let's check to see if anyone's brought down nefarian 
because of course its head will be right there and it's not so no they haven't at this point now by the way last time we were here it was at night we're now here during the day you can see it's totally different in terms of the look and feel we've got the nice bright blue skies and by the way sometimes it does rain here in Elwyn Forest it's very cool when it does but there you go again looking at the devastation up on those towers there caused by Deathwing geez a big 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 dragon trust me but this is what elwyn forest looks like during the day it's just beautiful it's the most idyllic forest scene ever love this zone and hopefully we'll get the elwyn forest music there it is in the background again so many memories folks but look at it lovely sort of slightly autumn look and feel to the zone and that's what it looks like during the day. Again, we'll come back here perhaps with a flying mount and fly our way through these zones so you can have a good look at them. But in the meantime, of course, we've got hand-ins to do before we wrap up this episode. Alan Moore, the cooking okay. trainer there. We're out of Crutney. Crutney? Cranberry chutney again. Let's hand that in. Oh, and we do get ourselves another piece of the Pilgrim's attire. So I think, what do we get? Maybe we'll get... What do we get? The hat? Or should we get a turkey shooter? Covers a target with turkey feathers. <laughs> and of course that's what people were using to shoot us before when we were up in Ironforge very cool I think though what we'll do is we'll get ourselves what do the boots look like pilgrims boots maybe we'll get them just to match our cooking dress there yeah that might be the best thing I think so we'll complete that Have quest get ourselves some stormwind rep there which is very cool and just make sure that we've got no more cooking training that we can later. do nope got Jasper Moore here who is uh, handing in for the chutney of course cranberry chutney yep 2000 xp which is very good and you can see we've got this again here they're ravenous and darnassus so it's just as well we came back here first thanks for bringing the cranberry chutney there's so much cooking to do i hardly have time to think of anything else and on top of my responsibilities here isaac allerton in darnassus is almost out of uh what is he almost out of everything i don't suppose he'd be willing to step in and whip up some more spice bread stuffing and pumpkin pie the vendor should have all the ingredients you need so you should be able to find him near the feasting tables near the entrance to darnassus so we have to bring five servings of spice bread stuffing and five pumpkin pies Safe to the guy travel. outside of darnassus and of course you'll see here We've already got ourselves the spice bread stuffing because we made that and we've already got lots of pumpkin pie so we already have everything that we need for that quest and in fact if we look at it here there we go you can see we've already completed it so again well worth making these now seeing as we're here once again we want to make sure that we're picking up any of the ingredients that are here and I think we've already got 40 of them in our bag but we'll just grab a couple more there we go grabbing another stack because you never know when you need them and I think how much spice bread stuffing have we got we've got about 40 of them how many do we need for this quest only five so that's not so bad although yeah okay if I was you I would make some more though all right so as we look out over the idyllic Elwyn forest we're gonna have to wrap it up here uh, or else we're gonna be way out of time now what I will do in the meantime folks as you know is I'm gonna go into our cooking I won't bother showing you we're going to make a bunch of, well actually no we're not because we need to go to Teldrassil. I was going to say we're going to make a bunch of candied sweet potato but we don't need to do that until we get to Teldrassil. We've got ourselves a whole bunch of chutney. We don't need to make any more of that. Um, all we need to do pretty much is teleport ourselves to Teldrassil but we'll leave that till the beginning of the next episode. So gosh as you can see it's relatively complex and again if you're not a mage or you don't know one it's going to be hard to get around the place but it's well worth it for the upkeep of your cooking in terms of getting your skill up. I mean look we're already 225 how awesome is this plus of course the bunch of achievements that we get. Now we need to do this one I definitely want to do this finish it off before uh, Pilgrim's Bounty ends and you you can see we need to go to Darnassus and the Exodar as well. That'll be another treat for you guys having a look at the Drenai capital city of the Exodar. Very cool. So we'll probably cover off both of those in the next episode. Anyhow, on behalf of my snivelly self, I sound a bit, <laughs> excuse me, a bit like Seraphis at the moment. And again, my apologies if the voice is a bit off or making uh, annoying sounds. I do uh, apologise, but I really needed to get this filmed even though I'm sick because I really wanted you guys to see this uh, great content. So on behalf of my snivelly self, Sambo, and of course the even snivelier Seraphis, it's us saying take care. Certainly hope you enjoyed this episode. Certainly hope you're having a great day wherever in the world you are. Look forward to seeing you next time. We'll see you then, and bye-bye.